Hello and welcome to the newsroom. Yeah, are the stories we're following at this time. I am Fola Shadi Ogurinde. President elect Bola Hamed Tinubu has discussed strengthening US Niger relations in a phone conversation with US Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Tuesday ahead of the 29th May inauguration. The two leaders also discussed the importance of inclusive leadership representing all Nigerians, continued comprehensive security cooperation, and reforms supporting economic growth. Also in a statement from the office of the president-elect signed by Tunde Rahman, Tunubu pledged to work to ensure continued positive relations with the United States. The presidential candidates of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has arrived at the presidential election petition tribunal sitting in Abuja for the resumed pre-hearing of his petition against the president-elect Bola Tunubu. The tribunal had last week adjourned the pre-hearing session on Obi and the LP's petition to May the 17th at the instance of the petitioners. On Wednesday, the justices arrived to commence the day's proceedings and also refused to acknowledge the representation of the party aside from Obi. Meanwhile, the presidential election petition court has refused to recognize the two factions laying claims to the national leadership of the Labour Party. The two factions of the party had engaged themselves for recognition and to be recorded as the official representatives of the party in the pre-hearing of Obi's petition. Following the confusion that ensued, the chairman of the court, Justice Haruna Simon Tosamani, ruled against the two factions that the court would not recognize or record their respective presence as representatives of the party. The presidency has said the administration of President Mohamed Obari's government should not be blamed for Nigeria's inflation rates which reached an all-time high of 22.2% in April 2023. In a statement by Gaba Shehu, the presidential spokesman, the inflation being experienced in Nigeria is a worldwide problem which no nation is immune to following the global economic downturn and the COVID-19 pandemic. In business, Dangote Refineries anticipating the arrival of its first crude batch in June 2023, according to S&P Global Commodity Insights, Petrol production is projected to rise from nearly zero currently to 249,000 barrels per day in 2026 and exceed 300,000 barrels per day by 2033, while petrol imports will decrease by over half to 154,000 barrels per day by 2026. Nagote refinery operations would have a positive ripple effect on the Nigerian economy, fostering the expansion of diverse sectors. A French appeals court has upheld a prison sentence of three years, including two suspended against former President Nicolas Sarkozy for corruption and influence peddling. The court maintained it should serve a one-year detention sentence at home with an electronic bracelet and banned him from public office for three years over his attempts to secure favours from a judge in a case uncovered by wiretapping. In sports, Inter defeated AC Milan 1-0 last night to qualify for the final of the 2022-23 UEFA Champions League to be played in Istanbul, Turkey on June the 10th. Inter's Argentine striker Lutaro Martinez finished Romelu Lukaku's flick from between a melee of legs right inside AC Milan's box in the 74th minute. That goal killed off any hope of Stefano Piolo's men, staging a comeback with aggregate three goals down. And that's it from the newsroom. To join us at the top of the hour for more stories, I am Fola Shadi Ogrindi. Bye for now.